Progression. The process of developing or moving gradually towards a more advanced state. To progress in Yu-Gi-Oh! is to move forward, starting from humble beginnings as you grow and advance your collection. We all know the drill, moving forward in Yu-Gi-Oh!'s timeline, opening up a box of each set to advance our collection and open up new and varied strategies. If this is what progression means in Yu-Gi-Oh!, then antithetical to this is sealed. Seal. To fasten or close securely. Both limiting and restrictive, playing sealed in Yu-Gi-Oh! involves opening up a box of one set and building a deck out of only those pools. It requires skills in learning the ins and outs of an individual set and the ability to identify the outliers and what counters are available to combat them. Progression and Sealed are as diametrically opposed to each other as Yugi Boomers and Yugi Zoomers, but no longer. Enter the Seal of Progracalcos. In this series, in each episode, myself and Tobias will open two sets from Yu-Gi-Oh, moving chronologically forward. We will then play three matches against each other. The first two being sealed showdowns where we pushed limited deck building to their limits, the third being a progression match where we can use every card in our collection to build the most powerful deck at our disposal. This is the Seal of Progokalkos. Quick disclaimer, prior to starting this series, Tobias had only ever played Yu-Gi-Oh as a child, so we'll be learning the rules as we go. These matches were also originally played in 2021 onwards when we embarked on this journey as a way of reconnecting and staying in touch every weekend. So using the YGO Pro Deck Collection Manager to showcase our pools, and Dueling Book's own replay system, I kindly invite you to watch The Seal of Progracalcos. Hello and welcome to episode 3 of The Seal of Progracalcos. Today we're looking at the Labyrinth of Nightmare and later on we'll be checking out Dark Beginning 1. First up though, Labyrinth of Nightmare was released just at the start of 2003 and contained some interesting cards, let's say that. I wouldn't say these cards are particularly good outside of Torrential Tribute. Obviously things like United We Stand and Mage Powers have seen stints of playability. We obviously do have Card of Safe Return, which is not a very good card at the moment in Yu-Gi-Oh! But as more Graveyard Revival becomes a thing, this card quickly uh, saw the limited list and then was swiftly forbidden. We obviously have Dark Necrofear, which is a kind of like a BLS for Fiends. It's not that great, but if either of us put it, it might be worth like trying to put, build some janky uh, deck based on it. We do have obviously Magic Cylinder, which is like a playground staple. It's not that great, but obviously if, if either of us put it, it's just like an annoying thing to watch out for. Gemini Elf does uh, break the cap in the vanilla monster attacks, 1900 is pretty nice. We have Last Roy from Another Planet, which is just a funny card to uh, metamorphosis into. This card just basically makes it Last Warrior versus any sort of spell traps the opponent might have, because nobody's summoning monsters, so this card is pretty strong. We've got Royal Command, which is an interesting tech card, but not very good, and Destiny Board, which is just a, a funny uh, win con. In the short print, Fairy Box is just killer for most decks. Tornado Wall makes Umi decks stun even more. And when we get to like a Legendary Ocean fairly soon, Tornado Wall and Gravity Bind just makes it an absolute pain to deal with anything water related. Fusion Gate has seen some interesting applications throughout history, but at the moment it probably isn't that good because there's not too many good fusions to go into. I mean, I suppose you can make the last warrior from it without needing Poly, but there's no real ways to get into Fusion Gate consistently before we get terraforming and stuff, so it's not too good at the moment. And Vengeful Bog Spirit is just like another stun stally card, because Yu-Gi-Oh needed a lot more of those. Another one. Another one. We've got Jar of Greed, Bazoo, Kaiku. These cards all just like see some stints of playability. The Bazoo and Kaiku especially end up forming some pretty nice stun decks and also control builds. Uh, into the rares, we get what? Amphibian Beast is like another just decent one tribute. Gillosaurus leads to some funny OTK builds, especially when we get to Catapult Turtle and all that. We've got the other spirit messages. And in the commons, I think we got again, just like this set is really like full of weird, like 
OTK, FDK enablers like Amazon S Archer. You've got even the reverse heal build where you've got Cure Mermaid and Fire Princess. Oh, and you do get the original spirits where the ones that just banish a monster of their attribute to summon from the hand, which is pretty good and um, extra fodder. And some of them actually have decent effects like Aqua Spirit and Garuda being able to change monsters battle positions is decent. Sombriar wait, rivals Jirogumo as the best level 4 alone monster out there. So this card is really strong as well. And there we get Mario Katai. Here we go! What else have we got here? Dark Dog, more stall. God, this set is just garbage. Okay, so flipping over to our collection, let's see how we pulled for this set. Okay, we got some decent super rares. We got a couple of bazoos, obviously plentiful aqua spirits and the one Amazon S Archer, which is terrifying. Cure Mermaid, which we picked up a three of those, as well as, I don't think we got any five. Oh, we got one Fire Princess, so theoretically that's online, especially because we have Sangan that can search things. We did get more than enough fairy boxes. A Fusion Gate, we got a couple of that, but that's not relevant until much later. We did get one Magic Cylinder, one Mario Katai. It's me, Mario! We also did get Destiny Board as an Ultra Rare, and we did manage to pick up every single spirit message, A, I, L, and N. I am Yami Benbo, Dark Master of Jank. When Benbo opened Destiny Board, he freed me from the confines of the Millennium Ring. And now, I am unleashed to wreak havoc upon Tobias. I present to you the Death Dealing Destiny Board. With this continuous trap, we will watch as Tobias writhes in agony, knowing that with each passing turn, his inevitable fate draws ever closer. Along with the board itself, we have the spirit messages. I, A, N, and L, although as Jewelling Book prefers to show the OCG art, D, E, A, T, H. Tobias's will come soon. <laughs> to pair with our fiendish board, we have our own fiends too, Triple Headless Knight and the Double Gross Ghost of Fled Dreams. Alongside them, we have the Humanoid Slime, this gelatinous defender will protect our life points. Amphibian Beast completes our vanilla monsters. As far as effect monsters go, we of course have Zombira the Dark, Nuvia the Wicked, and the Rock Spirit, who can banish our headless knights from the grave to special itself from the hand. Pair that with Double Bazoo, and it'll be Tobias' soul we're eating tonight. <laughs> For our final effect monster, we have the Forgiving Maiden. I didn't put this here. Who dares? Uh, Benbo, the echo of my former self, must have inserted this card here in hopes to reawaken the latent good boy within. Well, it won't work, Benbo. This body is mine. For our spell and traps, we have a number of devices that play on my sadistic and torturous nature. To start with, we have the Akibio Drachmord. With this equipped spell, any monster Tobias dares to play will meet the same grisly fate as he will. We also have two Mask of the Accursed and three Mask of Brutality. These two masks aim to weaken his monsters whilst boosting ours. For our final spell, we have Offerings to the Doom. This quick play spell card will make mincemeat of any monster Tobias dares summon. In addition to the destiny board itself, we have three of the fiendish fairy box. With this, any time Tobias dares attack me, his monsters might return to the hand. <laughs> the dark spirit of the silent will also help ensure his weak monsters hit into our big defenders. And to combo with this, we have the Destruction Punch. With this trap card, when he attacks one of his monsters, who has lower attack than our monster's defense, we can destroy their monster immediately. Then we have the Magic Cylinder Trap card to reflect any damage back at Tobias. And finally, two Mask of Weakness. 
Now I think it's time for this shadow game to begin. <laughs> I, of course, win the rock, paper, scissors. With my shadow powers, I can predict your every move, Tobias. I go first. Hmm. A decent opening hand. No destiny board, but that can soon be arranged. To start with, we'll set down two face-down trap cards, and then I'll set one monster in defense position and end my turn. Tobias sets a back row and a monster, as if I expected any more. Oh, and the dark door. <laughs> Don't you realize that card favors me? I'll normal summon my Zombie of the Dark and attack your pathetic defense position monster. Dream Sprite, what sort of pathetic man are you to play a card like this? With your Dream Sprite squashed, I'll end my turn. Tobias summons his own Zombira, embracing the darkness, are we, and attacks mine. I activate my trap card, Fairy Box. Flip a coin, Tobias. Tails. You got lucky, but that luck won't hold forever. Ha! Huh? The first spirit message. I'll pay the 500 life points maintenance cost for my Fairy Box and set down another monster. Your move. Tobias passes. I'll pay another 500 life points for my fairy box and set down one monster. Your turn. You're passing already? I expected more of a challenge. I'll pay again for my fairy box, then I flip summon my humanoid Slime. Slime, attack into his Zombira, weakening his monster. And now your Zombira is no threat at all to me. I end my turn. Setting another monster? You are foolish to think that will help you. I summon a monster! The Headless Knight comes down to the field. I will attack once more into your Zombira, weakening him ever more. You're passing? Again? I'll flip summon Nuvia the Wicked. This Wicked Warrior loses 200 attack for each monster you control, putting it down to 1600. But not for much longer. We'll banish our headless knight to bring forth the Rock Spirit. The Rock Spirit, destroy his weakened Zombira. Your monsters fade while my field grows ever stronger, Tobias. Set another monster, by all means. We all know what fate has in store for it. At this point, I will refuse to pay the maintenance cost for Fairy Box, sending it to the graveyard instead. Rock Spirit, attack! Ugh! Earthbound Spirit! Your turn, Tobias. My turn again? Hmm. Mask of the Accursed. Now the true fun can begin. I activate an equip spell, Mask of the Accursed, and I equip it to your Earthbound Spirit. Now, during each of my standby phases, you'll take 500 damage. Rock Spirit, attack once more! Shining Abyss. <sighs> of course you would be playing such angelic cards to try and combat my darkness. There's no hope, Tobias. Your friend Benbo is lost to the dark forever. Give up already. Ah, down comes another Zombira. As you attack, I activate my trap card. Mask of Weakness, slicing your Zombira's attack by 700 points. My turn. I draw. And then my turn. Draw again. Set down. It matters not, as the accursed mask will be your downfall. Rock spirit, go! Ugh! Another earthbound spirit. End my turn. Spiritualism? To bounce back my mask? You have staved off 500 damage there, Tobias, but you've accomplished nothing. My turn again. Mask of the Accursed, go! Equip to his Earthbound Spirit once more! I end my turn. Setting another back row, is that all you can do? My, my, Tobias. 
Your life points wither away each turn as your passive play slowly erodes your very soul. Oh, the third Zombira presents a problem, but you choose not to attack. How foolish. I'll activate my quick play spell, Offerings to the Doomed, destroying your other earthbound spirit at the expense of my next draw phase. Then I'll normal summon Bazoo, the Soul Eater. Using Bazoo's special ability, I will banish two monsters from my graveyard to boost his attack by 600 points. At 2200, this Bazoo can strike over your Shining Abyss. Oh, the box is on the other foot now. I call heads, and it always shreds, and with it, your abyss, your shining hope of what you recall the friend you once knew, this destroyed before your very eyes. Your move. Now, since you have fairy box out, you take another 500 points of damage to maintain it. My, my. Every turn your life points drain by a further 500, you'll be finished before you even draw the destiny board. You're activating Fusion Gate? Then that can only mean... Saint Joan! Her heavenly glow burns! You've made a grave mistake in playing her, Tobias. Because I have my own fairy box! Tails. Flip. And Vengeful Bog Spirit in your main phase too. Huh. You really don't want anyone having fun. And I thought I was supposed to be the sadistic one. I turn my monsters to defense mode and end my turn. Tobias lets his fairy box expire and passes the turn back to me. Draw! My Mask of the Accursed is all that keeps me in this game. But while I have the fairy box on the field, enjoying each player's standby phase, we're both losing 500. And with my life points at a deficit, I will surely lose the jewel before he does. We draw, and it's the gross ghost of fled dreams, one of my favourites. We both lose another 500. I'll banish the bazoo in my graveyard to special summon another rock spirit and end my turn. Tobias passes. During my standby phase, I'll elect not to pay for my fairy box and send it to the graveyard. I then set down a fresh face down and end my turn. Offerings to the doomed. Pops my Nuvia, that's more than okay for me. And another offerings to pop my rock spirit. And a, th a third offerings. Yes. Don't try and bring the cross against me. <sighs> Three times my... Talk this Stop Ias Save No Ah Your heavenly light is strong but no match for my shadow powers Using your third offering to clear your cursed earthbound spirit My what a clever boy you are You set down another monster and pass back to me the Amphibian Beast is a great draw. I'll bring him out by tributing my Rock Spirit, and I'll give him the Mask of Brutality, boosting his attack to 3400. Your turn. Another Akibio. Another Akibio. You're killing me here, Tobias, and I love it. <laughs> During my standby phase, I will refuse to pay the cost for Mask of Brutality, sending it to the graveyard instead. And then I activate my own Akibio Drakmord, targeting your Saint Joan. So she writhes in pain as the Drakmord takes over, corrupting that once virtuous soul into a being of sin. I'll set down a monster and pass my turn. You set another and pass my turn. <sighs> I set down a monster and pass my turn. Amphibian Beast meets his end at the hands of your Akibio Drakmord. But in no time at all, your Saint Joan will meet the same grisly demise. And there she goes. I'll activate Akibio again, this time targeting your Zombira, and pass it over. 
pass. Aha! At last, I have drawn my destiny board. Though my back row might be a little too clogged to even use it. Still, we must torment Tobias with it if we possibly can. I set one card face down and end my turn. Another set and another pass. Zombira meets his end. My turn and I draw the Dark Spirit. I activate my trap card, Destiny Board! That's weird. All that fuss for a board game? Shut up, Wheeler! Now, with each passing turn, one new letter will be added to the board to spell out your ultimate fate. The clock is ticking, Tobias. <laughs> and as I end my turn, I bring forth the E! Your move! Down comes Rock Spirit, and it's my turn again! Pass! Pass. Thrilling gameplay as we start to discard. Summon another Rock Spirit, by all means. What can you possibly hope to accomplish? I'll activate the Fairy Box and elect to destroy it! I end my turn. Curse of the Masked Beast! You think a creature of darkness such as myself would be intimidated by Loomis and Umbra's sloppy seconds? Your attack is futile! Go! Destruction Punch! Since your monster has less attack than my monster's defense, your rock spirit will die, freeing up another zone for my destiny board. As your turn ends, down comes the letter A. Look at the destiny board! You're just two letters away from the sweet release of death. I'll set another monster past my turn. Another pass, Tobias. You're accelerating your own end. It's almost as if you want to spend eternity in the Shadow Realm. Death is almost assembled. All you have to do is attack with one of your weak monsters so that I can activate my final destruction punch freeing up my last spell and trap zone for the final letter. I will flip summon the Headless Knight and I'll attack into your rock spirit. I will take 550 and in main phase 2 flip summon the Forgiving Maiden. Using her effect I contribute her off to bounce the Headless Knight back to my hand. I set down another monster and pass my turn. Oh, you're just gonna deck me out, aren't you? <sighs> Winning like this, Tobias, is the way of a coward. Are you not willing to be a man? Spiritualism? No! My destiny board! How could you do this to me? I set a monster on two back row. Oh, flip summon my bazoo! Bazoo, attack his rock spirit. Dark spirit, making my gross ghost. No, don't attack. Ugh. And the winner is duelist number three. Tobias. Tobias, you've saved me. And now to defeat the evil villain once and for all by throwing him carelessly in a random direction. Go, Millennium Frisbee! You haven't seen the last of Yummy Benbo. I can assure you of that. Oh god, it feels good to be back in my own body. Hopefully that's Yummy Benbo banished forever, but you never know if, if Jank comes a-calling. He might take over again, but for now, he's gone and we can forge ahead with the episode with myself back in the driving seat. So for our actual uh, Labyrinth of Nightmare sealed deck, we start off with an Amphibian Beast, which is just a decent uh, vanilla one tribute monster. Then we have a few terrible cards like Worm Drake, uh, who's mostly here just because we're playing a plethora of fusion stuff with our fusion gate. So this guy helps to make the humanoid Worm Drake along with the humanoid Slime. And Slime is a decent defender with 2k defense, but Worm, Worm Drake is just garbage. You're trash. Drake. 
only usable because it makes a 2200 dude. Gross Ghost is just an 1800 defender. It doesn't make any of the fusions and isn't that great, but there's not too much else that you're, that's worth playing from the set anyway. Dark Lord Marie is part of the St. Joan, and also if it gets into the graveyard in any way, it can kind of mitigate you against the life point costs of stuff like Fairy Box by healing you a little bit each turn. Zombira is just a premier level 4 lower monster. Likewise, Stoic Fairy is very strong, and Bazoo in mid to late game can help you out most things. Uh, supply is terrible, it doesn't actually work the way I thought it did because it only returns from the graveyard to the hand. There's no way to recur the things you, that you banish from Fusion Gate, so this is just a terrible card. Totally useless. And then the Forgiving Maiden is just another 2k defender and also one half of St. Joan. Mario Katai. Yahoo! And we've got in here because we're playing the Last Warrior and given some buy was really good and Fusion Gate is a pretty good card for this sealed environment, we thought we might as well attempt to get the last warrior otk off with uh, this dude we've got a couple of ventral bog spirits just to slow the game down a kibio drapmord that is a pretty good removal against things especially when the format's so slow mask of brutality and the accursed uh, brutality lets us punch over things and accursed lets us basically stop an opponent from attacking and kind of is a win con eventually the burn damage will win you the game and combined with stuff like fairy box there's a lot of life point paying in this in this set so hopefully this could this could come up to be one of our secret win cons we've got the fusion gate to make our big dudes and then we have offerings to the doomed which you only pulled one of triple fairy box which is the uh, probably the poster child for this set in terms of just fun and games who knows what's going to happen hate this card but i love it as well Skull Lair, I think, is a decent include. Later on in the game, you can use it to banish your kind of dead cards in the graveyard to potentially out your opponent's monsters. And then we have the Magic Cylinder, which is just funny, and I hope to win with this card. Loading up our first hand, let's have a look at what we've got here. Okay, we've got Bazoo, Zombira, Worm Drake, and a Darkland Moe. Uh, fairy Box as well, which means that the fun can start instantly. We're going to normal summon Zombira and set down a card. Tobias sets a monster and then Akibio Drachmords are Zombira. <sighs> Fun times already. So Zombira is basically iced here, so we're just going to tribute it for the Dark Lord Moe, at least get some value from this. We're going to go for the battle. Since there's nothing set, we actually can get through this supply. And we pass our turn. Tobias down, brings down the Dark Door and the stool begins. Supply gets banished for a Rock Spirit and then a set monster comes down to. Tobias passes. Our turn, we draw into a Forgiving Maiden, but we're just going to go for the Zombira, get the aggression going, and we'll just punch on over the Rock Spirit, dealing only 100 damage, giving the Rock Spirit gained a 300 defense, sorry, 300 attack during our battle phase. Tobias just passes. We draw into another Ventral Bog Spirit, which is, well, into a Ventral Bog Spirit, which is just going to throw down and just make the game hell. Uh, at this point, we're just going to set a monster, and then we're going to go for the Zombira into the set. It's another supply. We can our Zombira once more and pass the turn. Tobias just sets a mystery card and passes back to us. <sighs> it's time to go a little bit aggressive. We're going to hit him with the Dark Lord of Marie. And, ooh, it actually clears. Not a fairy box set, which is good news for us. Tobias just passes again. Don't stand there, do something! We're going to hit him with the Dark Lord of Marie. And surely this can't just keep... We can't just keep winning like this. Offerings to the Doomed comes down. And double, double Offerings to the Doomed. Okay. We lose both our monsters here. Uh, but at least Tobias isn't drawing next turn. Oh, okay, we draw into a Mask of Brutality, which is pretty decent. We're going to normal summon the Bazoo and pass the turn. Oh, what about that? Send him off! Send the drifting edge off! I guess we just forgot about the fact that the draw phase got skipped. Anyway, Tobias sets down a monster and passes the turn. Back to us. We draw into Mask of the Accursed, which is pretty good here. We're going to banish these two for Bazoo, boosting up to 22. I'm going to strike one in and clear the Earthbound Spirit. I pass by then. Tobias normal summons down the Zombira. Uh, we draw the Fusion Gate, which actually enables some of our plays to go off. We just don't quite have the material in hand at the moment to be able to make anything funny, but it's it's an option. We're gonna go for the Mask of Brutality, just buff up our Bazoo to 26 and just punch on over the Zombira. Tobias is down to 4k life points and we're feeling pretty good about this. He sets a Mystery Monster, passes back to us. We're going to attack in and clear the Shining Abyss. Oh, at this point, because I've got the um, Dark Lord Moe and the Mask of Brutality, I'm just taking 800 damage each standby phase. So that's how we simplified that there. Down comes another Rock Spirit and a Fusion Gate and a Mage Power. 
This Rock Spirit is up to... 27th, 3200. No attacking for you, Tobias. We draw the Mask of Brutality again, and that's the, just the perfect draw. Equip that onto our Bazoo, and it's a 3600 Chonga. Strike on over the Rock Spirit, the deal a piddly 100 down. Zombira comes through and just passes. Our turn, we draw an Offerings to the Doomed. We're going to take 1800. I'm just going to Offerings, pop the Zombira, and <laughs> put a third Mask of Brutality on. <laughs> This bazoo is the brutalist baboon ever. Easy game one. We're going to start off by going second here. Looking at our opening hand, double worm drake is not what you like to see, given this card is useless. Hysteric fairy is not too bad. All right, Tobias sets down a couple of cards and a monster and passes back to us. We draw into gross ghost and we're just going to hit the aggressive by going hysteric fairy here. Punch on in and see what we're dealing with. It collides into the Shining Abyss, uh, no damage dealt to anyone, I'll just pass my turn. Tobias sets another monster and passes back to me. We draw the third Worm Drake, I'm just going to summon one of them at this point. We want to keep one in hand just in case we draw into Fusion Gate. We're going to Brutality one Worm Drake, I'm just going to use it to try and attack in. Ooh, Mask of Weakness comes down, that puts us to 24 minus 7, puts us to uh, 17, so yep, Shining Abyss survives that. I'm just going to try and punch over the Earthbound Spirit. Take another 200 and we're just going to pass back. Tobias sets another monster and it's finally Argo again. We take a thousand from the brutality and down comes another hysteric fairy. We're going to Akibio Drac more to the Earthbound Spirit because we don't really have a way to reasonably out that. We're going to Worm Drake and we get Offering to the Doom and we lose our Worm Drake. We're going to Hysteric Fairy into whatever set and this time it's a Supply which we do clear. Tobias turn and he banishes that Supply straight away for the Rock Spirit and passes. I'm just going to set down the Gross Ghost and pass. At the end of the next turn, Akibio will finally destroy Earthbound Spirit. Tobias passes and the Earthbound Spirit dies and we get the Akibio back. Our turn, we're going to go Bait Doll, just see what this face down card is. Tobias reveals it, it was offering to the Doomed, so it gets set back down and we shuffle the Bait Doll back into the deck. We're going to set down the Mask of Weakness and we're going to Akibio his Rock Spirit to start chipping away at that. Another Earth gets banished and another Rock Spirit comes down. Tobias sets and passes back to us. Uh, Fusion Gate is pretty good. We're going to just battle and hit into a Dream Sprite. Oh, wait. I, does that... Is that how it works? Like, I attacked the Dream Sprite and it was face down and then it could redirect. I don't... I don't think that's how it works. I think Dream Sprite has to be face up for that effect to work because otherwise, like by the time that you flip it up into damage calc and damage depth, or sorry, in damage depth, then the attack target has already been declared and it's almost it's too late. But regardless, that's, that's a bit of a misplay. And we lose our historic failure by punching into a uh, rock spirit for no reason. Uh, Tobias draws and passes and he, his rock spirit dies. We draw the Zombire, which is pretty good. We're going to Akibio his other rock spirit. I'm just going to keep setting. This Akibio is getting so much value here. Oh no, we're going to Akibio the Dream Sprite actually because that's the card that we actually can't deal with. Uh, we're going to go for the battle. He's going to not redirect with Dream. Oh, I suppose because we, we didn't actually attack the Dream Sprite. So these, these cards are weird. I just attack this supply and kill it. Dream Sprite gets destroyed and Akibio comes back to hand. We're going to go for the Zombire and we're going to Akibio Shining Abyss. Mask of Weakness comes down and we lose our Zombire here. Uh, now, okay, now main phase two, we're going to Akibio and target the Rock Spirit. Now we know we can't deal with it. And we're going to go for the Fusion Gate, banishing Dark Lord Marie and the Forgiving Maiden to make her eminence, St. Joan. Fuse together Marie the Fallen One and the Forgiving Maiden to form St. Joan. Pass turn. Spiritualism comes out and that returns one of our cards to the hand and Offerings to the Doomed too. So it bounces back our Mask of Weakness and we lose the St. Joan just as soon as we made her. Whip. We've not got much going on here, so we're just going to set and pass. Dabar sets and the Rock Spirit dies. We get the Akibio back to hand. Our turn, we draw a Humanoid Slime. And now we can use that plus the Worm Drake to bring out the Humanoid Worm Drake. Slimy yet satisfying. At this point, I probably should have got more aggressive by flipping my other cards. We attack over the Dream Sprite and can't clear the Shining Abyss. Pass turn. 
to buy. Oh, we are getting hoisted by our own fusion gate here. Sheer fucking hubris. As St. Joan comes down and clears our own worm drake. We're gonna mask of weakness though and bounce, put her down to 21, killing her. I died that day! We get another fusion gate for the turn, which is not really useful. We're just gonna head to battle. We don't wanna. At this point, we probably should have just overcommitted to damage just because of Dark Door shenanigans that could come down. But instead, we just play a little safe and just attack with the Hysteric Fairy. We draw, Bazoo comes down, and at this stage, we're going to banish 3, buff it to 25. We're going to flip open the Gross Ghost and the Worm Drake. And Humanoid Worm Drake plus Etal deals with the rest of Tabata's board. And that's Gam. Hello, and this is the progression deck profile for Labyrinth of Nightmare. So our deck's pivoted and actually now has a consistent theme. We've gone for a bit of the Earth focus, running both Triple uh, Jiragumo and Triple Rock Spirit, making use of Gaia Power to buff them both by 500. We're using Bubonic Vermin as a really easy way for us to get material for Rock Spirit into the grave, as well as just Tribute Fodder for either the Jinzo or the Labyrinth Wall, and it's also a card that we can pick up on using uh, the one giant rat we have, which is just like another way that you should just get Earths into the graveyard or onto the field. We've got a couple of Zombiras, and who's just like another decent body, and the Double Bazoo as well, which is another Earth monster that's incredibly strong, especially in the mid to late game, that can help just close out things. Lab Wall kind of conflicts a little bit with Gaia Power because it loses 400 defense, but 2600 defense is still pretty hard to get through. We've obviously got the Jinzo just because the card is so powerful. We've got the one Sangam which can get us any of the little guys, and we have the triple Mystic Tomatoes as well, just as this is like a decent, consistent way of keeping the monster on board for tributing. We have the one Morphing Jar 2, bit of chaos, why not? In the Spell and Trap department, we finally limited Pot of Greed to one. So we've got the one Delinquent Duo and the one Pot of Greed. We've also got a Painful Choice and Heavy Storm. So Painful Choice is mostly here to mill out uh, upstart goblins as well as probably the Pot of Greed and maybe like a Vermin. Or we can just use it to dump a whole bunch of Earths to enable Bazoo to get super strong. Be bigger, faster, and stronger too. So we've got Double Fissure as decent removal, likewise the Offerings to the Dooms, and Double Rush Relity for some damage depth shenanigans. In the trap department, we've got two Magic Drain just to stop Tobias's power spells. Got a couple of Mitchazores and a Magic Cylinder just to round them off. In the side deck, we've kind of got a bit of an equip spell focus with our Axe of Despair, Martial Brutality, and Mahavilo, as well as just some other like spell trap removal and interesting things. In the extra deck, we've got two Bluffs. Now that Tobias knows that I have the last Warrior and he does know I've got Thousand Eyes Restrict, I wanted to think there's a possibility that we might be playing them. Alright, hopping on into the progression duel, we win the rock, paper, scissors, which is always good to do, and we elect to go first. Looking at our opening hand, we've got Sangam, which is really useful, can float into most things from the deck, Zombira, just a standard good attacker, and we've drawn the Mystic Tomato, and we've got the Bazoo for follow-up. We're just going to go for the st straightforward standard Zombira, set up both our traps as a back row. Painful choice. Yikes, let's see what he's doing here. Well, we're not going to see what he's doing, because we're going to go for the Magic Drain. Get that shit out of here. Language. Tobias sets another monster and passes the turn back to himself. Oh, we draw the offering to the doomed, which is pretty useful. A decent removal. We're just going to hold it for now and go for the Mystic Tomato normal summon. Zombira attack in ugh, into his own tomato. Tomato for Michizore. Ooh, which is a nice clean out to Zombira as well. And we're going to float on in to the witch. Ooh, I know. I know what this leads into. We're just going to go for the Mystic Tomato clear and. Tobias with his witch ends up grabbing a Zombira to hand. That's a pretty nice thing actually because he has Sangan can't search Zombira but witch can. That's a pretty nice combo. We're just going to set down our offerings to the doomed as an extra little insurance and pass our turn. Tobias sets, goes for the Zombira, doesn't want to attack which is understandable given that Mystic Tomato doesn't really, killing him, killing him doesn't really benefit Tobias too much at this stage. We're just going to throw down the Sangan and head into battle. Clearing the Zomba- oh. Deliberately we're going to hit into uh, Zombiro with the Mystic Tomato. We're going to 
Oh, I see what we're doing. We're doing the old weaken the zombie. We're going to float into the second Mystic Tomato and attack in again. <sighs> Draining zombie by another 200. We're going to use this to grab our final tomato. And we're going to go in now with the Sangan. This puts his Zombiwa down to 1500. And with the Sangan, we pick up a Bubonic Vermin. We're going to hit him with this Mystic Tomato. Put him down to 1300. And with the final Tomato, we're just going to pass. At this point, his Zombiwa is pretty dead in the water. Uh, but speaking of water, here comes a seven colored fish. I did not expect to see this card. I, I would have thought the water would have been power crept out by this point. We're going to go for the handy dandy pot of greed here. Grabs ourselves a labyrinth wall and another Zombira. Fire down the Zombira and we're just going to head into battle against the seven colored fish, which surprisingly goes through. We take, oh, <sighs> wow. We get Mishizoid in response. Fair enough. Tobias, summon, you're not still on crab turtle. Okay, okay, we grabs the crab turtle. Just getting Vietnam War flashbacks to last episode already. Uh, Senju hits him for 14, elects not to attack with a Zombira. My turn, we draw the Gumo. At this point, we're just going to go for the Bazoo. We've stocked up our graveyard nicely with plentiful tomatoes to... Uh, have our bazoo eat. And he noms them but all and becomes a 2500. I'm going to punch on over the Senju here and just deal a bit of damage. Tobias draws and goes for the Offering to the Doomed, clearing the bazoo. Not sure why I didn't do that in combat, maybe he thought he had some kind of out. Uh, oh god, that speaking of out, that... Jeez, I have Viola with Malevolent and Nuzla, that's 29.50. Then that's going to meet our own Offering to the Doom, so we're both going to skip our draw phases. Uh, this pass just passes. Uh, we go for the set of the Bubonic Vermin here, just to get a bit more advantage going. Tobias plonks down a Joy Gumo, passes. Uh, we've got no, no reason to apply any pressure, just set down another Vermin. Tobias sets, passes. I'll go, uh, Rush Rattles is pretty de decent here, but we're just going to set it, uh, pass. Set pass from Tobias. It's scintillating gameplay. Oh, start gobbling. Well, at least we're actually activating cards. And we draw into Heavy Storm. Oh, that's a really good draw. Okay, I'm going to flip over the Bubonic Vermin, grab the final one from the deck. And then we're just going to go battle, hit on into the Zombire, and rush recklessly damage step. This vermin is no longer just a rat. Now he's the rat man. No, rat vermin. Oh, what do we do? Oh, do we crap? Did I not even do the math? I think we crashed. Was, was he at 1600? Oh! Huh? Oh, well, I, I don't exactly know what happened. I thought Zombio was at 15. Oh, it doesn't matter. Well, whatever. We made sure Zoe the Joy Gumo. And now, now in main phase 2, we go for the Heavy Storm to clean up the rest of Tobias' back. Where I think there was a misplay there. Like, just pause a second. If I look at the Bobonic, 900 plus. 700 so 1600 and the Zombira had uh, four counters on so 19 17 15 it would have been on 1300 I'm not quite sure how I lost my vermin at that point Idiot. anyway um so that cheat did matter because it allowed me to clean up the back row for the heavy storm to pass passes over to myself, we draw the Rush recklessly, and I'm just going to go for the Joy Gumo here and sit on it. We're not going to really want to risk half our life points when we know a Crab Turtle could be in our future. Tobias just sets one back row and passes turn. Okay, we draw the Upstart Goblin, which is thankfully a card that does something. So we're going to fire it off, draw into Fissure. Not too bad when he's going to summon his Crab Turtle, so that's a pretty good draw. We're just going to set a, our Rush recklessly and pass. Tobias draws, and Sonic Bird. Got to go fast. I gotta go fast. I gotta go grab that turtle loaf. Uh, Sonic Bird heads into battle and it's gonna pass. Ooh, he's not wanting to get rid of one of our vermin. We don't really mind that at all, especially when we're drawing into Jinzo. That oh, okay. We're getting we're getting fissured in our turn. 
Uh, okay, we're going to tribute one of these vermin and bring forth the ultimate android of destruction, Jinzo. Jimmy Joe is going to clear up the Sonic Bird, and at this point, we basically have the game on lock because the boss is out of trial. Well, I say it out on lock. Offerings to the Doomed is a very nice out to Jinzo. Good that we actually have some consistent spell removal now. That now, now we both have Jinzo. Okay, Tobias sets a card and passes turn. We're going to look in our graveyard for the Rocky Spirit, and we're going to banish one vermin and bring him on out. Can you smell what the rock is cooking? Let's punch on in with this buffed up dude. And Tobias passes. We draw into painful choice, and at this point we're just we're just having fun. Uh, we're gonna go for a giant rat, magic drain, Gaia Power, Gaia Power, Upstart. And we're given the upstart. Understand already, because the other four cards actually do something. We're gonna go for the upstart. Give Tobias another thousand and draw another rock spirit. We're gonna banish the rat for the rock spirit. And we're just going to go punch, Rocky Punch, 3400, the bosses go, sets a card, activates the turtle oath. Oh no, it's happening again. <laughs> Sending one crab turtle for another. He does not whisk the attack, which I think is reasonable, but given we draw fissure, ooh, into the I.O. Denied. Denied, sit down. Uh, that is actually horrendous because our Rush Rattlers is now offline. Um, we're just going to set and set, and we've got the Mitchell Zoe, so we have a clean out to Crab Turtle, but it gives Tobias an extra turn. He's going to keep the Imperial Order going and brings forth the Hysteric Fairy. Okay. Uh, Hysteric Fairy is going to clear the first Rock Spirit, and the, then we're going to Mitchell Zoe and get rid of the Crab Turtle. At this point, the game is more or less won, although we don't actually have a way to out Hysteric <laughs> Fairy. We don't need to when we have the morphing jar, Bendo. <laughs> Shuffle them all back. Tobias Mills, Mage Power, Turtle Oath, Horn of the Unicorn, Zombira. And gets one Zombira out of it. We mill a Gumo, Bazoo, Fissure, Rock Spirit, and Joe So we get two Gumos and a Bazoo, which is pretty nice. Um, with that all being said, I believe this is our main phase one, which we can't exactly attack with these dudes. We're just going to banish the final Rock Spirit for our another one. I'm going to use him to clean out this Zombiro before it can become an issue. I'm going to pass our turn here. This point, Tobias lets the IO go and brings forth his own Zombiro. Um, I don't really think he has any way to stave off the life points that's going to come his way. He clears up the Bazoo, which is fine. doesn't really matter. We're going to flip over and our big spiders and we're just going to go for the battle Zombira, get him out of here doesn't matter what the coin flips do because you are dead alright heading into the next duel we open with a couple of decent traps Jinzo, Giant Rat and Rock Spirit which is a pretty consistent way to get over an earth in the graveyard for tribute fodder and also to just kind of stave off some of Tobias's more powerful threats Tobias is going to start with a simple back row and a set monster. I'm going to just set down the giant rat and the Michizori. And the magic sends down. <laughs> we're, just, we're just going to set the fort. Hysteric fairy comes down. We're not too fast about him. Uh, no, no combat. Pot of greed. We're happy to see that. We're going to draw into an upstart and a lab ball. We're going to fire the upstart as well. Might as well just keep getting as many cards as we possibly can. Okay, magic drain is decent here. I'm going to tribute the giant rat just for the Jinzo. Head into combat. Oh, we'll take out the witch. That's pretty good. Although it means that uh, Mahavilo is. I mean, I saw it last game, but it wasn't the card I was expecting. Vilo comes down with a nuzzler, putting it to the old 2750. And another nuzzler. 3200. 3750, I believe. And. The f oh, okay. Well, the fissure's decent. Gets rid of our Jinzo. And this is the. Oh, I see what we're doing. I was like, this is a mega punch, but it's not really. But you're gonna Mitch's away the hysteric fairy. Your overconfidence will be your downfall. Magic cylinder! Reflect that damage back at Tobias. We draw into a bubonic vermin, but at this point, we're just gonna go for this set. We probably should have just Mitch's away the Mahavilo, but it was more funny to magic cylinder for half his life points. Isn't another hysteric fairy comes down and opts to just clear the 
first vermin with it, and then with this first vermin, we're gonna just cycle into the second and the third. Tobias passes. We draw a Sangan, which is not bad, but it's not good either. So we're just gonna set that down, and as well as the magic drain, and hopes that maybe there's some way. Oh my gosh, and the dark elf. The big monsters just keep on coming. Gonna pay the thousand, attack with the dark elf, clear the Sangan. Sangan's gonna grab us the morphing jar too. Pretty much the best out we have for this kind of nonsense. Enjoy your last moments, you egregious vermin. Historic Fairy is going to cleanly kill the final bubonic vermin, and then we're going to take 39.50 from the Rilo. We draw Jiraguma, and we set the very telegraph, the morphing jar number two, but there's not much else we can do. Tobias just goes for battle and shuffle everything back. Ah, uh, the old buff and bluff, the hey old Murray, the Sasquahanna shuffle, huh? 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 <laughs> shuffle, shuffle. Tobias gets seven colored Zombira and. <laughs> You're still on Gyojin. How has your deck got so many, like, I mean, I suppose mine is, like, random stuff, but, like, Gyojin, 1650, that card's not good anymore. Okay, so, well, the seven colored fish is still pretty good. We draw, we go for the Jerry Gumo, and at this point, we're going to have to try and start cleaning up his board before they become problems. So we're going to banish the Bubonic for another Rock Spirit, and we're just going to punch on in, clean out the Zombira. Tobias sets another monster, and go... Goes for the Mitch's. Oh, Mitch's always from the Zombira to pop the Joy Gumo. A little bit of delayed Mitch's Zoe, but you know, he's still. Tobias is still learning. He's just a little baby. Just a little baby jeweler, still learning. Isn't he adorable? Alright, Tobias flips over in the seven colour to the Gyojin and passes. That is not ominous at all. I've got a month. Well, I suppose the Rock Spirit doesn't contest seven colour fish on my turn. Uh, hopefully we can draw into something that might. We're going to go for the upstart here, and off the top we grab Zombira. That's pretty decent. We can get rid of one of these fish here. So we're going to go for the Rock Spirit, clear up the Gyojin for 50 damage, putting Tobias back to a nice round of 5,000. And then Zombira is going to smack on in and get rid of one of the fish. Going to pass here. Okay, Tobias draws pots of greed. We're going to man we're going to magic drain the pot of greed. So put that card right back on the top of the deck. Another Gyojin comes down. This is just an, this is just an interesting board set. I guess the boss is doing it this way. So while he takes a bit of life point damage, it means that I can't just like summon a weak dude and get over the Gyojin. Which to be fair, we've drawn the Mystic Tomato, which would have been a good out to it in defense mode. We're gonna just summon him down. I'm gonna go for battle. Use the Zombira, clean up these seven color fish, and we get Dark Spirit of the Silence. So negates the attack, and now I attack my other monster. Oh, jeez. We're gonna. Huh? What the. What? Oh! Oh, that's not how it works. He, he's made, he made the rock spirit attack seven colored fish, and then I rush recklessly and damage that. I was thinking this is like magical arm uh, bind where your monster attacks your other monster. No, it's not that at all. Okay. So we clean up that, and then we go for our tomato and clear Tabata's tomato, which goes into a witch. With that, we pass the turn. Tobias draws, and it's a painful choice, not bad. Let's see what he's milling here. Getting Umiruka, 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 Mage Power, and Jinzo. Huh. Well, those are five pretty good ways to deal with what I have going on. Either the Umiruka just makes his um, High Tide Gyojin massive, and I think that's the best that we can do. At least we clear the Umiruka with Heavy Storm and back in the game. So we're going to give him the Umiruka, he slams it down, boosts his Gyojin and clears the Rock Spirit. i take a little bit of damage here. On our turn, we're going to draw into Mystic Tomato, go for the Heavy Storm, pop the Umiruka, going to go to normal summon Mystic Tomato. Zombira's going to punch on in over the Gyojin and he's down. And then with the Mystic Tomato, we're going to hit over Witch. Tobias grabs his Zombira. And then our final Mystic Tomato is just going to smack in 1400. Zombai was a really good pickup though here because that kind of cleanly deals with everything we've got going on. Device. Oh god. Aqua Spirit. This card is actually pretty good. Uh, its ability to just change one of my monsters' battle positions during my standby phase and make it so it's unable to change battle positions for the rest of the turn really can come in handy. It's probably the best of the little spirits just in terms of it, how annoying it is to deal with. Uh, one Zombai clears the other and then Aqua Spirit punches on over our tomato. Tomato goes into our second tomato. Tobias passes. 
We're going to fissure, get rid of the Aqua Spirit, and then we're going to Tribute Set. So now our lab, now our Labyrinth Wall is protected against Aqua Spirit's Battle Changing Shenanigans. Tomatoes just passes. We're going to go down for the Joy Gumu, and at this point we have to risk our life points. Heads always shreds and tails. It's always fail. Ah, <sighs> damn it. All right, uh, Zombie we're down, but so are most of our life points. Tobias goes off into the Doomed and just plonks out the Zajoi Gumo. Fair enough. Our turn, we draw. Bazoo is pretty much game over. Unless Tobias has some kind of attack negation, this should be the game, and it is. Ooh. I'm going to be put in second, which is fine by me. And we get a... Pretty good hand, although like at this point, like all the cards in the deck are like kind of just good stuff. Like none of them are like super busted, apart from maybe th that painful choice. Uh, speaking of things that deal with things, Zombara comes down from Tobias. We draw into Rock Spirit. We're gonna go Upstart, draw into Joy Gumo, which is pretty good. We're gonna fire off the painful choice. Uh, we're gonna mill out Zombara, Jirai, Jirai, Dire Power, and Giant Rat. Tobias gives us a Giant Rat. Fair enough. Probably the worst pick. We're gonna banish the Joy Gumo for the Rock Spirit. And then we're going to tribute for the Jinzo. And just smack on over. Oh, yeah, off wings to the Doom. This card is, this card is a really nice out to Jinzo. All right, pass the turn. Back to Tobias. Goes for the Mystic Tomato, and he starts laying down some heavy damage on me. We're going to go for the Bazoo. Just banish, banish, banish. Or banish two. Just to make him 22. And I feel like I'm 22. Banish the rocks one more rock spirit for the other. I'm gonna clean up the zombie and just punch on over this first tomato, though I fully expect the chain to keep going. Oh, okay, goes into the witch. We're just gonna pass a turn there. Tobias draws, goes for the fissure, cleaning out the rock spirit, and then he's gonna tribute for the Jinzo. <sighs> it's kind of like glued to both of our hands. Which is going to grab him the Maharilo. I fear some equips in my future. And the Joy the Jinzo is just gonna out the bazoo. Maybe I should have banished another monster just to make, make myself Jinzo proof. Anyway, that's alright. Alright, we draw into Rock Spirit, which is not the greatest. We're just gonna set down the Sangan. Go for the Hysteric Fairy. Joy Gumo clear Sangan. And with it, we're gonna pick up the old reliable morphing jar. Does he look like a spider? No, no more like a droid. Start Fairy punches one in, and that's another 1800 gone. Bazoo is a really sick draw here. Uh, we're just going to go for it. Banish, banish, banish. Put this guy up to 2500. I'm just going to punch on over the Jinzo. Mahavilo comes down. We were kind of expecting this along with the Malevolent Nuzzler, putting it to 2750. Cleanly out the Bazoo. We take a little bit more damage here, and the Hysteric Fairy punches one in for its B18. Well, on the ropes, but we've got, ooh, we've got options now with drawing Gaia Power. We're going to set the Morphing Jar, and we're just going to banish for Rock Spirit. We're going to activate the Gaia Power and head into combat. Our Rock Spirit is just going to clean the out the Hysteric Fairy. We're going to pass our turn, and Tobias draws. Stra heads straight into battle and cleans our Rock Spirit out. Take a little bit more damage here. We're getting low, but not... Not to the point where we need to really worry. So we're going to flip open the Morphing Jar and just shuffle back the Mahavilo and itself. Uh, we lose our product, we lose Offerings to Vast, gets the Seven Colored Fish and we get Zombira. Um, yeah, those are pretty favourable. We're going to gnaw some of the Giant Rat who's buffed up by the Gaia Power and smack on over the Seven Colored Fish. Tobias draws. Goes for the spider. Oh gosh, the anti synergy. His spider's getting boosted by our Gaia. Oh no, here comes the Aqua Spirit. Heads into battle and smacks on over the known Zombira. Doesn't want to risk half his life points for the clear. I mean, to be fair, who would want to risk 4,050 4, life points to clear a rat? Uh, we're going to draw the Bubonic Vermin, which is just going to set more little pests for Tabas to have to deal with. Rodents! High Toad Gyojin comes down. And into battle, uh, cleans out the rat, and with the rat, we have nothing to float into. Gyojin clears out the bubonic, bubonic floats into a middle one, and refuses to attack. We're going to change bubonic to attack mode to grab the third one, and then we're gonna, just going to tribute set the lab wall. It does lose a bit of defense, but it's still still at 2600, so it's not, not easy enough to get over. 
Tobias summons down another Gyojin and cleans up the final vermin. He goes for the high tech Gyojin just into the lab wall. Uh, main phase 2 fissure. Uh, delinquent duo is the worst draw in the deck. We can't do anything with that. And that's the game. Well done. Okay, into the all important game 3. I'll put this on fast. Some Byron comes down, three card set, mills five uh, with a painful choice, grabs it again with Fever Treasure. I'm gonna flip over our um, Mitsu Tomato, punch on into the uh, Zombira, use the Rush Rattlesea to crash, go into a second Mitsu uh, Tomato, and we're gonna hit him for 14. Offering to the Dune gets it, clearly out. Uh, Zombira comes down, we're gonna Fissure, I owed. Uh, we're gonna set another monster, uh, this is just a stall fest. Hydra Gideon comes down, we're gonna Magic Drain the Umi Ruka, we're gonna upstart Goblin now, draw into Morphin number two. Tobias still on running to attack, we're going to go on someone else on just crash. We're going to go for the Michizori, clear out the guy, Hydra Gyojin, he's going to Michizori, I'll be Bionic Vermin. He's going to go for the Gyojin again, we're going to banish and summon our Rockspirit, we're going to banish to summon uh, to buff Buzzu to 25. We're going to get Dark Spirit of the Silenced, which means we lose our Mystic Tomato here. And then we're going to go for the clean out with the rock spirit and then the Sangan Direct. <sighs> Tobias goes for the Mahavaila plus the Malevolent Nuzzle, we go for the Offerings of the Doomed, and we're just going to punch him in with the rest of our dudes. And... Put Tobias down to 36.50. Tobias is finally trying he draws the Joy Gumo. He's got to have to risk his life points here. And it doesn't really matter because even if he gets heads, we rush back to see. Clear it, I come back, he's going to Fissure, get rid of the Sangan, which is going to find a way out of full with Sangan. Our turn, we're going to normally summon the Morphin Joy number two for the ultimate disrespect win. Hey, Patrick. What? I thought of something funnier than 24. Let me hear it. 25. <laughs> Next up, we're opening Dark Beginning number one. Now, we're only doing five of these packs because they are incredible, so we're only going to get 60 cards from this set as opposed to opening like a full box because otherwise our collection would be full of the broken DM garbage. The forceful centuries we see here, and all the other hand ripping cards, uh, delinquent duos are super. You've got stuff like Dark Hole, Premature Burial, Megamorph is pretty annoying at this stage in the game, United We Stand, Torrential, all kinds of just crazy, crazy powerful cards in this set. Of course, we have a uh, Tribute to the Doomed. I don't want to play with you anymore. How could this happen to me? I made my mistakes. <sighs> just a whole bunch of other just crazy stuff from this uh, era. Change of Heart, you know, we stand, Mage Power again. And back in the commons, just a whole bunch of the recruiters and things that you might have had, like janky ratios of. So this is essentially, we're just opening five of these just to try and buff up some ratios to make our decks a little bit more consistent and also play the insanity of Dark Beginning 1 in Limited as well. So, flicking on over to what we managed to pull. We pulled, um, well, not much. We did get a Dark Magician, which is cool. It might enable some Dark Magic decks later on. We did get a Goblin Attack Force, which is a pretty strong beater, especially as we're walking the guy power. We've got your boy Griggle, uh, Karate Man, Larvae Moth. I don't think we have the a perfectly ultimate Great Moth to combo with it, sadly. Uh, Marcel's were we've used him before. He's decent. A Malevolent Nuzz is going to be pretty good for sealed. Painful choice again. Like this card is nuts, but I don't even think this is good in sealed because we're going to just mill out five cards. And honestly, or actually, honestly, we just mill out five bad cards. To be fair, like there's barely enough here to make a cohesive 40 card deck. So just being able to thin it by five dead cards might just be worth running, just so we don't draw them. Sewagen is probably our best card. Like if we can establish this two tribute guy, he is super difficult to out. We have a spellbinding circle as well, which can negate some attacks. We didn't pull like any of the like heavy hitting cards that we were missing, like any of the stuff like the ha some of the hand ripping things, uh, change of heart torrential or anything like that we did get a card of safe return which isn't useful yet but maybe down the line could could come up all right and flicking on over to our dark beginning one sealed deck there's not a lot of gas here it's just sort of any card that is remotely playable we have a few decent vanilla tributes in dark magician with 2500 attack slot machine was actually a pretty decent defense that of 2300 and Curse of Dragon is just a one tribute guy. Uh, we've got the Armored Lizard, he's got uh, 1500 attack. 
Aquamodora has always been pretty useful. Uh, Beaver Warrior. Beaver Alert! Again, bringing back this classic card. We have a Portrait Secret, which has uh, 1500 defense, and that's about it. And then a few other 2k defenders in Earthbound Spirit and the Mystical Elf. Silver Fang and Swordsman of Lands, though, just fill out the vanilla cards. We've got the Sewagen, which is, if we can establish this, this is really hard to out. Goblin and Type Force beats over pretty much anything that's four stars or lower. Obviously, it comes with a huge downside, uh, but just being able to beat over something is pretty useful. We've got the Flash Assailant, Masked Sorcerer, Karate Man, and Hayabusa Knight. The Banisher of the Light, 2k defense again, and likewise the Arm Ninja. We are playing the card of safe return because in combination with the shallow grave, we could net a draw out of it. It's like a two card combo that is almost impossible to trigger, but you know, a card draw is a draw. Mask of Dispel, if there's like an annoying field spell that Tobias has, this can just slowly burn him to death because we're playing a couple of Mystic Plasma Zones and the Course of Sanctuary, so I imagine field spells are gonna be prevalent, so this card could be stealth win con we've got this uh, lightning blade in combination with dna surgery we can make every any of our monsters warriors and just give them an 800 attack eleven nuzzle just another decent booster uh, mask of the accursed like with the, the dispel this is just a potential burn win con and then we've got our three field spells in course sanctuary to boost our defenders even more and mystic plasma zone which only really helps slot machine and dark magician but you know those are our big payoff tribute monsters so potentially this could come up Painful choice just to mill out like five of our rubbish vanilla monsters or shitty uh, effect monsters. And we've got the Shallow Grave just to recur. Uh, I guess Arm Ninja is probably the best one or really anything. Tail of the Fickle just in case the bars is on some equips as well. We can just put them onto Arm Monsters. And if, particularly if he, if he uses Mask of the Accursed to try and stall us out, we can then just give that onto his monster to make him lose the life points from that. We've got the Mask of Restrict. This kind of negatively uh, has negative synergy with our big tributes, but if, if we can establish a tributed monster and then flip over this card, then it's pretty much game over. Solemn Wishes for life point gain. Spellbinding Circle just to stop a monster attacking. And then Backup Soldier can give us some of our effect monsters back to the hand, which especially with our plethora of defenders, this could be good at just stalling the game. Magic Drain could negate something. Grave Robber's funny, we can just steal a spell in the, in Tabasa's Grave, so if he pulls anything broken, we can just actively use it ourselves. And then Shadow of Eyes, all in all, not very good, not not very many good cards here, but that's the joy of Sealed sometimes, you just gotta work with what you get. We win the Rock, Paper, Scissors and elect to go first. Let's have a look at our opening hand. Um, well, we've got the painful choice that we can use that to mill out some of our sh terrible cards. Uh, speaking of terrible cards, here's the Swordsman. We're just going to be fine with the painful choice immediately, uh, milling out Slot Machine, the Portrait Secret, Swordsman of Landstar, Silver Fang, and Earthbound Spirit. Tobias gives us the Slot Machine, which could spell his downfall in a couple of turns. And we're going to set the Earthbound Spirit and the Tail of the Ficklon Pass turn. Tobias just sets a back row, oh, Tobias sets two back rows, three back row and a monster and pass it back to us. It goes for the Solemn Wishes, so we already know that we're going to be dealing with a lot of life point gain and a lot of stall. We're just going to set down the Armed Ninja and hope that maybe we can pop one of his back where that's a spell and pass. Tobias draws, gains his 500, sets a monster and passes. And this is pretty good value for us. We're going to flip open the Armed Ninja, just target Ugh, Minor Goblin Official. Well, let's hope we can never get to a position where we're low enough life points where that matters. So we're going to tribute our two. Go slap machine! Attack mode! Now Fire off the, the Mystic Plasma Zone to boost her, him to 2500. Dealing, it's your lucky day, Tobias! Boom! Oh. Well, that's, that's chaotic. Yep, we're going to resolve the effect of Power Side, Power Side, shuffling it into my deck. That'll be fun when we draw that. Uh, Tobias draw, gains another 500, sets a monster. Our turn, we draw the Course of Sanctuary. We're just going to go for the Mask Sorcerer, which incidentally also gets boosted by the Mystic Plasma Zone. I'm going to start trying to deal with his field. Slot Machine goes in first and hits into oh, a Reliable Guardian Aquamador. So we take 200 damage from the battle. And then we're going to hopefully clear. Oh, we, clear, we do clear the Shining Angel. Tobias will float on in... nothing. Uh, classic. Uh, down comes a Gaia Power and gets rid of our Mystic Plasma Zone. And Hysteric Fairy comes down too. Fairy goes in, tries to clear our Masked Sorcerer. 
And I'll turn with the DNA surgery, which is pretty decent. I'm just gonna head on in and punch over the Kestite Fairy. Sparse so passes. We draw another Mystic Plasma Zone, which is just a perfect draw here, allowing our slot machine to get over the Neo Aquam sorry, the Aquam door, and then allowing our Swordsman of Landstar to chip in. Boom! Mitigating Tabasa's next life point gain. Down comes Makura the Destructor. That is quite a terrifying card to have to deal with in the future. Uh, but right now it's just a 2100 thanks to the Mystic Plasma Zone. Cleans up our Swordsman, we take a, a 1600 as Tabasa gains his 500. Backup Soldier was pretty good given the plethora of normals in the graveyard. We're just going to head for battle and hope we can clear the Makura. Yes we do, nice. 400 damage out to Tabasa and we pass our turn. To our sets and passes. We're going to set the Shadow of Eyes and just battle on in here. Hitotsumi Giant is Hitotsumi dead. <laughs> Tabas gains another 500. I mean, he forgot his 500 from the previous turn, so he gains 1000 there. We're going to go Backup Soldier here and grab ourselves the Silver Fang, the Portrait Secret, and Earthbound Spirit. And draw the Mask of Despair. We're going to go for the Silver Fang here and just start trying to pile on as much damage as we possibly can while Tabas' board is empty. 3700 is decent, and Tobias gains another 500 back. Passes. Ooh, we're going to go for the Portrait Secret and just punch on in for even more strong damage. Go slot machine! Plasma laser cannon! Attack! We could have actually DNA surgery here, right? Do we not have DNA surgery? Yeah, we could have DNA surgery for the Lightning Blade. I suppose we want to keep that just in case that Tobias manages to out a board with like a Raigeki or a Dark Hole. We don't really want to overcommit. Just loads of damage dealing here and Tobias is surrendering. Into game two. Ooh, this is a hand and a half. If we can get the Dark Magician and Mystic Plasma Zone, that's a 3000 attack wizard. Oh, that would be crazy. Okay, Hitotsumi comes down, boosted up by the Gaia Power, that's fine. We draw Shadow Grave, doesn't really do much at this stage. We're just going to set down the uh, Aquamador as well as our Grave Robber, just in case there's any spells that we can pinch from his graveyard. So, Tobias sets a monster and passes. We're just going to set our Mystical Elf and pass. Just walling up here. To uh oh. Tobias tributes to for his own Sewer Gin. Oh boy, this card is such a pain in the ass to deal with. Uh, it's going to kill our Mystical Elf cleanly, and then we're going to get Chain Energy. Got these chains on me, and yeah, the dragon beat down. Wow, we draw into Swordsman of We're gonna go for the Shallow Grave here, bring back our Mystical Elf, and Tobias brings back his Hitotsumi. We're gonna go in Mystic Plasma Zone, overcome his guy power, and we're just gonna tribute both of these for the Dark Magician. I'm super. Now, we're gonna take 500 from all of these three cards activated, so 1500 huh. in total, and we're just gonna try and punch over Tobias' set monster, which is a Feral Imp and bites the dust. Tobias just passes. Banshee of the Light's not bad, but there's just no way we can deal with Sturgeon until... Well, there's just no way we can deal with Sturgeon, really. Fissure comes down, cleanly deals with Dark Magician, and yeah, we're just gonna take 2500 here. Our turn. Mask of the Accursed is a, is a clean way to deal with it, but we're just going to use the Grave Robber. <laughs> the Dweeb had a Grave Robber card, and he used it to bring back my Fissure, and use that to pop the sewage in. Oh. Oh. Well, that's not good, is it? Well, we're on a clock, and it's pretty much lights out. We're just going to punch on in with Swordsman. So during our standby phase, we take another 500 from the Minor Goblin official, and we're just gonna battle and die. I'm going to die on my own terms. All right, into the all important game three. It's gonna opt to go first here, see if we can establish something that Tobias cannot deal with, and I mean, Minor Go uh, Goblin Attack Force plus a back row. Into Silver Fang, oh, into Four Star Lady Buggaloo. Mercure comes down with Gaia Power and the Scroll of Bewitchment, turning his guy Mercure into Earth. Things are just flying like crazy here, and we're going to eventually put in the Sewage in, gets rid of his Mercure, uh, gonna gain life points, kill his Parasite Paranoid, that goes into our deck. 
going to draw into armor lizard we're going to tribute for the cursed dragon gift to the mystical elf prox giving to bias 1200 life points and we're just going to clean up both of the monsters with our two tributes to bias sets a monster and sets a back row and we're going to aim 500 armor lizard comes down and we're just going to attack into big eye to bias mills a million cards for some reason and i don't really know what he does with them you put them on top of your deck in any order i think he just puts them on the top of the deck in any order i think that's how the card works and we're going to cleanly go in for the 4,000 hit to bias draws we know what he's drawing into and we're just going to attack for the big game. And we offered a rematch. Why are we doing more of these? I have, I have a, I don't have a wife and kids, but I have a, I have things that I could be doing other than editing these videos. But apparently past me just wanted to sabotage future me by making as many jewels as possible. We're going to mask the accursed one of his dudes. He's going to slot machine. We're going to spellbinding circle it. Sunny Angel comes down and deals 1400. We're going to discard Carter safe return. And Hitchcock to me comes out. We're going to have to discard Curse of John. And that was just an easy little loss. No monsters that we could have summoned whatsoever. <sighs> Fun. Okay, this hand is looking a bit more manageable. We're going to set down the portrait secret in two back row. Flying Kamakui number one comes down. Then deal 100 damage back to the bars. We're going to go Solemn Wishes. Start getting our life points here. To our sets of card and confiscation. Zuru looks at our hand and gets rid of the sewage in. And Marsh Cure comes down and clears off the portrait secret and Flying Kamikiri deals a bit of damage to us. We're going to draw a Lightning Blade, which isn't too useful here, but it is actually. So we have the DNA surge rift, what we set there, making our Silver Fang a warrior. We're all warriors now. The warrior he was always born to be. And then we get Infinite Dismissal, which. What even is this card? Oh, it destroys level 3 and monsters, lower monsters on the tender plate. We're going to go for the Flash Assailant since we only have one card left in hand, clearing up the Flying Kamikiri. It floats into the Sonic Bird. We're going to draw Beef Warrior. Flash Assailant is going to be able to just about deal with the Sonic Birds with 1600 attack. And then the Beaver Warrior is going to attack into Big Eye. Tobias is going to look at the top 5 cards of the deck and stack a Reliable Guardian net. Okay, you're going to stack them so he's going to be drawing into his big 2k walls. Fair enough. Tobias sets a monster, I wonder what that could be. We draw. We tribute them both for the ultimate wizard in terms of offense and defense. And we're going to head in and manage to deal with the first Aquamador. Tobias sets a monster. We, everybody's gaining. We're just going to deal with it once more. And Tobias, he's back to 8,100. We know that he's not drawing anything good at the moment. So we're just going to be able to keep punching on in. He's going to draw, heal. We finally draw another monster. And gives the magical elf comes down, giving Tobias 900 life points. We're going to punch over the Power Sight Paranoid. And we're just going to go for 2,300 with our... Uh, goblin attack force it goes to shift to defense, but that's okay. I'm just gonna punch one in again with the dark magician, putting the bars to 2700. Uh, 3200, I suppose, now with the uh, Solemn Wishes. Force our ladybug kills our dry, uh, our dormant attack force. We managed to pop the reliable guarding with the arm ninja, and dark magician gets in, kills the sunny angel. Arm ninja goes in for 300 damage, then dies because of the infinite dismissal. We draw the power site, power saw, power not whatever this card is, which makes all our guys insects. Um, so whilst there's insect barrier, we're pretty doomed. We're going to go for the slot machine now where we and to just clear this insect off the field. And there's the game. Okay. Into what must be the last one. Surely we didn't do more than two matches of this. Okay, we draw a pretty decent hand here. We're going to go for the portrait secret. Just attack in, take 800 damage from the Nagromador and get our accursed it in the main 2. Um, okay, we're going to get... Portrait secret down from the flying camera. Okay, we're going to set. He's going to tribute two for sewage in. Um, we lose that. Okay, Solemn Wishes comes down, and we're just going to have to set and hope we can stave off these guys. Swordsman of Landstar dies. We're going to set a monster and go for the Cause of Sanctuary, buffing our high so much 2200. Ooh, this is good. Now we actually have our 2k defender with Cause of Sanctuary. Ah, Rush Recklessly comes down and clears us up. Hitotsumi summons that springs on down, and with these two, we're basically out of the game. Shadow of Eyes does nothing and Gaia Power comes down over getting rid of our guard. We're going to Shadow of Eyes to 4 stars so at least it gets no value but we're going to take the 800 damage. And we draw the Mask of Dispel and Arm Ninja. Arm Ninja can pop his nothing and then we lose. So given that neither of us pulled anything like crazy from Dark Beginning 1, we just elected not to bother doing a progression match. I did make a prog deck here but it's basically the exact same deck as what I was running before. The only difference is I added in like the second painful choice just to be able to mill out some of the up upstarts and stuff like that uh, faster. So we didn't bother doing one of these because it would have been the exact same. So yeah, this, this episode is thankfully over. Here upon Ricky, ready for more duels. Hey, hey. Episode. It's over already? No, Ricky, not no. We did obviously the progression match in the middle 
sandwiched it with two sealed matches as well as um, a brief appearance from my alter ego who hopefully is staying banished to the Shadow Realm for evermore but you know you never know when the spirit of jank might infuse him to return anyway next up we're going back to regular sets for both of our packs we're going to go for legacy of darkness and pharaonic guardian now these two sets actually do introduce some significant uh, new sort of subtype themes for, for decks so hopefully our progression decks will begin to evolve with these depending on how we pull anyway thank you very much for watching do please subscribe uh, to stay up to date Bye.